Happy Monday, guys. John Connolly here from UncleJohnSoap.com. Today I want to talk to you about being new to soap making. And it's really not that much different than being new to anything, any hobby or business you take on, uh, any new skills that you learn. When you're just starting out, if if you're like me, and I notice a lot of people are, they research, 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 you know, online, Google, YouTube, and they see how other people are doing things and try to replicate that. And that's cool. That's that's the way we learn. The other way we learn is by doing and making mistakes. But I've noticed a trend in posts the last couple of weeks on some of the uh, soaping groups on Facebook. People talking about how frustrated they are about how imperfect their soaps come out and how somebody else is selling more or it was the first day they ever sold at a at an event uh, like a fair or a farmer's market and they only sold one or two items guys you, you can't come right out of the gate being you know a perfect success with anything you do it's just not gonna happen it didn't happen for me it's not gonna happen for you uh, you know people whose companies who spend thousands tens of thousands of dollars on advertising don't come right out of the gate making money um, you know, I started on a shoestring, card table and a hundred bucks. I made some soap. I went and set up at a farm market and did lousy the first couple of weeks. After that, started building a clientele. As people started using our stuff and trusting our stuff and a little bit of word of mouth gets around. And, you know, I mean, I've been doing this seven years, four part time with a day job and three full time here in this in my store. Uh, we have a retail shop and. We also sell online and to this day, a lot of our sales are still driven by word of mouth, uh, visitors to this town. We get lucky with visitors, but I have my local regulars as well. And then I interact a lot on social media. So I'm in like the niche wet shave groups and I interact with them a lot and not just to sell stuff. I mean, I'm part of that, that, that group, the wet shavers and of course, Ironically, all the new guys say, oh, what do you know about shaving? You know, then I got to show them a picture without my hat. You know, two to three times a week, I shave my head. I know how to shave, you know. So what? I have a beard. Big deal. Anyway, so when you first start making stuff, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to weigh things wrong sometimes. You're going to misunderstand super fatting, water discounts, you know, lie temperatures, oil temperatures, things like that. And that's okay. That's part of the learning experience. Does it feel wasteful? Yes, you've lost some materials. When I first started learning how to do carpentry and woodworking, guess what? I wasted some wood. It happens. In most of those cases, your 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 soap's still going to be usable. Uh, if you have lye rivers and it, you know it's all weird and mushy, you're right. That one's gone. I wouldn't even try to rebatch that until you're more experienced and you can figure out. You know, you can backtrack and figure out where did I mess up. Oh, yes, I can fix that. Or no, I can't. You, you'll you'll learn that after a while even then most of the time now and i think part of that's because this is a business but most of the time now if it's a if it's a mistake like that and it's not saleable or i can't chop it up and take it home to use for myself you know like it's ugly as sin but i know i can use it otherwise it goes in the trash i don't have time to waste on you know my time's worth money too and so is yours you know don't undervalue yourself Flat out broke, I get it, but let me give you a little tip. Start with cheaper oils first. Start with one or two oils for your base first. Get a handle on just making a good consistent product with a certain base. Don't try to get fancy and do 10 or 12 oils like everybody else does if you don't understand the concept. It's like, you know, in my house, perfect example. I think it's perfect, so maybe I'm just a little demented. But you'll let me know if I am. Um, I don't teach my kids how to tell time on a digital clock. There's a reason for that. On a digital clock, they can parrot numbers all day long. But they have no concept of what it means. Kids can tell you the day of the week and parrot it back all day long. But without looking at a calendar, they don't have the, the full concept. When I teach my kids how to tell time, big hand, little hand, the main numbers, then we start getting into, okay, half hour. Then eventually we start getting into quarter of the hour, you know, things like that. And each number also represents five minutes. You know, we go in progression. But then they understand the concept of a 24-hour day, 12 and 12. 
it's it's the same thing with soap making, guys. Don't don't jump into the deep end before you've learned how to doggy paddle. You gotta learn in steps. We all do. I mean, every I'm always trying to learn new things, and I can never just jump right in and be perfect at anything. And I'm gonna waste some materials and some time and get frustrated. It's gonna happen. But part of the process is knowing that you know what, I goofed up. Let's go back to the beginning rework the steps and figure out where we lost track. You know, I saw one person who showed a picture of their first successful batch. I was thinking, that's awesome. It was only the third time they had made soap and they had a real, I don't know how complicated it was, but it was a real involved swirl. I'm thinking, why would you do that being brand new? Why would you mess around with, now you have to split your batch into two if you're doing two colors mix colors into each one or one of them and you know then worry about putting it all back together in the mold you know if it's only your second or third batch guys worry about making the soap making a good quality soap decorate later don't worry about your labels yet don't worry about swirling yet you know don't worry about doing 20 different base oils and being all complicated until you understand the concepts of what each oil does and brings to the party you know, you can use straight olive oil and it's a great, perfectly fine soap. It doesn't bubble up a lot. That's a whole different video. Anyway, you can use canola oil and get very similar results. Although I will say, canola oil will turn, they all turn sort of this brownish color over time. And it's not necessarily dreaded orange spots either, um, which is basically oils going rancid in your soap. But they'll all turn colors over time. Canola just happens to do it sooner. Sorry about that hard cut. Camera fell over. Things just went all haywire here for a second. So see my mess? This is where I make everything. You know, people have suggested, and I may do it for some of my other my other playlists, like Don't Be a Jerk and that kind of stuff. Uh, but you know, when I'm talking to you guys, you guys get it. You know, this is a functioning soap shop. I make it here, I sell it here, I ship from here for our web business. It is what it is. You know, we straighten up a couple times a week and in between times, it's just, it's just a working shop. So it's going to be kind of messy sometimes. But anyway, where was I? Keep it simple. You know, don't get too hung up in the details, um, you know, too fast. I think start with basics, get a few batches under your belt, then step into doing swirls or even before that, I would step into, okay, let's experiment. Coconut oil, olive oil, maybe a little shea butter, you know, or palm oil, coconut oil, and olive oil, or you know, all kinds of stuff. You can make endless combinations and different variations of each. Don't worry about, like, lye and oil temperatures. Uh, I get that question constantly. People say, I saw you make your Castile soap and you didn't heat the olive oil. Nope. I pour it at room temperature. I do let the lye cool down some, but the lye is still usually 120 to 130 degrees when I pour it and, you know, mix. And it's fine. I've never had a batch go bad doing that. And, uh, oh, that's not true. One time I, I got a false trace and poured it too soon and it just never set up right. That's another thing, you know, you got to learn all these little nuances. Sometimes it looks like it traced, but it didn't. Or sometimes the batch will rice up on you where it looks like, tapioca loose tapioca while you're stirring it just keep stirring it it most of the time it will come back around eventually keep stirring don't panic and just say oh well i guess i better pour it no keep stirring it trust me i've learned that i a week ago i learned that you know every once in a while it's just gonna happen but stay simple don't try to don't try to it's like you know you want to be a race car driver and you haven't even gotten your road test for your regular license yet Come on, guys. One foot in front of the other. Learn how to do the pre basic process first and then start incrementally adding things. The, the faster you try to jump in and do exactly what the, I say experts, I mean, I'm no experts by any stretch, but the people that are more experienced and been doing it a long time, the, the faster you try to jump into exactly what they're doing, the more frustrated you're going to get. You know, I know everybody wants everything instantaneously. We have the internet, we have Walmart, we have, you know, Amazon. Ugh. Two-day free shipping, you know, everybody thinks every website in the world should be that way. That's the bottom line of this. If you take nothing else away from this, you know, keep it simple 
and start basic and take your time and you know you'll get there trust me you'll get there so all right guys have a great rest of your monday as usual if you have any questions you can leave a comment down below you can shoot me an email at unclejohnsoap at gmail.com uh, feel free to visit our website and take a look around uh, unclejohnsoap.com and if you ever get to berlin maryland right outside ocean city not this week because we have a hurricane evidently getting ready to land somewhere between here and north carolina uh, but if you're ever in the area swing by we're here pretty much seven days so all right guys have a great rest of your monday keep it simple <laughs>